let's look at some continuous and discontinuous functions and talk about what creates continuity and what adds to discontinuity. Now remember all those functions you learned back in algebra, like y equals x squared, y equals x cubed, y equals x, y equals 5. Really, any positive exponent of x or a zero exponent of x in the case of 5. Well, if your power of x is zero or greater, positive, then you have continuity because not only does your domain exist everywhere, but you're not going to have any jumps or any types of things that might go bump in the night. Turns out that if f is continuous and g is continuous, then any sum or difference of f and g is also going to be continuous. So f plus g is continuous and f minus g is continuous. What this means is that any polynomial is also going to be continuous because these are all just positive or zero powers of x added or subtracted from each other. That's continuity. So any polynomial that has positive or zero exponents of x, those are all going to be continuous everywhere. Let's talk about trig functions. Sine of x, that's continuous. Cosine of x, that's continuous everywhere as well. Really cool thing, if f is continuous and g is continuous, then f times g is also continuous. Pretty cool stuff. Tangent of x, not continuous. There's a vertical asymptote a bunch of times. Secant of x, not continuous. And really, those are because we're taking for example, tan x is sine x over cosine x. It's this cosine x in your denominator that makes tan x not continuous. Same thing with secant. Secant is 1 over cosine of x. Again, it's this cosine of x in your denominator that causes issues. So whenever you have anything in your denominator, there's a chance that you're not going to have any continuity at any point where that denominator is equal to zero. Now e to the x, that exists everywhere and that is a very continuous function. Natural log of x is a bit different. Natural log of x is continuous wherever it exists. And natural log of x exists when x is greater than zero because as you approach zero from the right hand side natural log of x approaches negative infinity and everywhere to the left of zero well natural log of x doesn't exist there is no function value and if there is no function value then we have discontinuity so natural log of x has discontinuity at x equals zero and on to negative infinity there's a whole space of discontinuity, uh, discontinuity there these are all discontinuous functions at some specific x value. In the first one, we have a discontinuity at x equals 2. Turns out that's a whole because it cancels out with the top. This one right here, we have a discontinuity at x equals 0. Well, we have a discontinuity at x equals 0 because we can't divide by 0. There is no function value at x equals 0. And of course, if you were to do the three steps of analyzing uh, the limit here, you would realize that this x in the bottom doesn't cancel out with any x on top. And therefore, this right here is a vertical asymptote. So because your x doesn't cancel out, here we have a vertical asymptote. Let's take a look at our third function, x plus 3 over x minus 2. At x equals 2, we're dividing by 0. However, x minus 2 does not cancel out with anything on top, which means that this is also going to be a vertical asymptote. If it did cancel out, like in number 1, that would be a whole. Now the last one is 4. Whenever you see absolute value, either on top or on the bottom, you should be very wary, because that means there might be a jump lurking. And in fact, in this particular example, there is a jump. This particular function looks like this. So, you see absolute value, just check for a jump wherever there might be a discontinuity.